unprecedented memo that has kind of thing that's never occurred in a confirmation hearing before. And former federal prosecutor Barbara McQuaid will join us with her view of the evidence in the Kavanaugh confirmation. Dell Technologies. When you're confident in the confirmation process, you never talk about what would happen if you lose the confirmation vote. But Republicans are talking about that. President Trump actually made some mention of that possibility today. And tonight on Fox News, Lindsey Graham talked about what would happen if the Republicans lose this vote. He said, what would happen if something really weird were to occur and we're one vote short? Here's what I would tell the president. I would appeal the verdict of the Senate to the ballot box, by which he means, so what would I do? I would renominate him and take this case to the American people. Of course, Lindsey Graham, as always, is lying. That is not what he would do. They would simply go to another nominee. Joining us now is Lisa Graves, former chief counsel for nominations for the Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee and former deputy assistant attorney general. And Barbara McQuaid, former federal prosecutor, is back with us. Lisa, I want to get your reaction to this very Republican memo written by this very Republican prosecutor who did the Republican senator's jobs for them for more than half of the hearing. Well, I think you said it best, Lawrence, it's absurd. Um, that memo is uh, paid for by our tax dollars um, and is described as a memo by a reasonable prosecutor. It's unreasonable. It doesn't include any discussion of Brett Kavanaugh's lies and deception. Uh, it construes everything against uh, Dr. Ford, whose testimony was compelling and uh, very thorough about what she herself witnessed. Um, it, it, credits hearsay uh, by other witnesses um, who uh, might have been there. It claims that those uh, other people have refuted her by, by merely saying that they don't recall what happened. Um, no prosecutor worth his or her salt would allow or write such a memo without actually having a real investigation, subjecting all the people that Dr. Ford names to real a real investigation by law enforcement, as well as real, real cross-examination under oath. Um, the memo isn't worth the paper it's written on. And uh, a prosecutor who was actually trained by Rachel Mitchell in Arizona uh, came out today saying uh, that this was not at all. This memo would, did not include any of the principles that uh, Rachel Mitchell actually taught to prosecutors there. And Barbara McQuaid, it almost reads like uh, Rachel Mitchell's confession, uh, in a way, about what this was really about. Yeah, I think those of us who uh, do trial work could see right away when she started asking her questions that this was not a quest for the truth. They were not open-ended questions. She was all about locking her into a story in an effort to undermine her credibility. The questions about flying, holding up the map to find out where the Columbia Country Club was located, uh, locking her into her prior statements to show inconsistencies was really all about taking down her credibility. I find it, what, what I find absurd is that any prosecutor would reach a conclusion before the investigation is over. The FBI has been given a week to investigate if you're going to do a report, you should wait until that's done. But nonetheless, this is the world's biggest distraction. Because as you said, Lawrence, this is not a criminal proceeding. There is no reason to be looking at this as a prosecution. This is Justice Kav Judge Kavanaugh's opportunity to convince us that he should be on the Supreme Court, to convince the Senate that he is worthy of the Supreme Court. This is not taking away his liberty, as we see in a criminal case. It is, should he be given the privilege and responsibility of overseeing the criminal justice system? Those and are two very different things. And Lisa, uh, President Trump himself said uh, when this uh, process was reopened that uh, they should have a new hearing so that there won't be any doubt about about Brett Kavanaugh. That was the standard that Donald Trump established. No doubt about Brett Kavanaugh. Well, that's right. And in fact, that was one of the only times that uh, President Trump got something right in this whole process. This is a matter of integrity. Uh, the idea that the, the Senate would promote a man who has been so credibly accused of sexual assault, of attempted sexual assault, and of the, the sexual misconduct toward Deborah Ramirez uh, is really offensive to the nature of the institution of the Supreme Court, but also to the role of the Senate in advice and consent. Um, this uh, nomination uh, should not proceed. Brett Kavanaugh 
Kavanaugh has demonstrated that he doesn't have the integrity, the truthfulness and the honesty um, and actually the character to be given such a permanent role in our U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, and Barbara, it, it seems, uh, well, I, we're going to have to leave it there. We've got to get straight to this uh, final break here. Barbara McQuaid, Lisa Graves, thank you both very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Tonight's last word is next.